shade over there, so I hope you're comfortable. I would like is Captain John Eric Burkhart of the Salvation Army to join me here, please. Oh, there you are. Sorry about that. I would like to introduce Captain John Eric Burkholt from the Newbury Port Salvation Army, who will deliver today's invocation. Let's pray. While we stand here today and remember all those who laid down their lives for us, help us never forget their courage, their sacrifice for us. Bring the town, state, and country safe. We love you in Jesus' name. I would like to introduce once again the Newburyport High School Marching Band. They will play the National Anthem. <laughs> introduce the mayor of Newburyport, Mayor Sean Reardon. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So what a beautiful day here in Newburyport. So again, thank you for all coming out. Please stay in the shade. It's getting hotter as we speak. Um, you know, this is my first Memorial Day ceremony, and it's just it's so amazing to be here with all of you today. Uh, I just want to recognize some of our other elected officials that are here today. Bruce Vogel, Councilor at Love. Jenny Donahue, Ward 
two. Uh, City Council President Heather Sheehan. Ward three. I also want to thank the uh, Coast Guard, the police led by Marshal Murray, and our fire department led by Chief LeClaire, who came out today as well. Thank you for all you do for us. And I also want to give a special shout out to the DPS who helped uh, put this day together with, with Kevin Hunt. Um, so uh, many of you might know, but I just got back from uh, Seymour Johnson Air Force Base uh, in Goldsboro, North Carolina. My, uh, brother-in-law, who married my sister Megan, uh, Colonel Luke Teal, who's also from New Report, uh, was just named uh, Chief Commander of uh, Seymour Johnson Air Force Base. That's the fourth fighter wing in our Air Force. Uh, their motto is fourth but first, which means they might be the fourth fighter wing, but they are always the first the Air Force sends into harm's way. Uh, it was a really amazing four days down in North Carolina, and what really stuck out while I was there was the theme of uh, service and sacrifice not only for the, the brave men and women who, who are in our armed forces, uh, but also the families that go on that journey with them. Um, it was really, every time I go, I, you know, I learn a little bit more and I, I understand a little bit more, but uh, it was really a great four days with them. So first, you know, they're not here with us today. Unfortunately, they had, to, they had to go back to North Carolina after being up here for a few days, but just uh, I wanted to thank uh, my, uh, my uh, brother-in-law, Luke, for his service, and uh, I just want to give him a quick little round of applause. <laughs> Okay, so uh, it is tradition on Memorial Day and Veterans Day to read the names of the veterans who have departed in the last six months. When I read the veterans' name in the branch of service, a bronze bell signifying that veterans' branch of service will be struck in honor of that veteran. Today's bell ringers are, for the Army, Mike Accardi, veteran, United States Army. Navy, Kevin Hunt, veteran, United States Navy. The Marine Corps, Larry Sostak, veteran, United States Marine Corps. And Air Force, Dr. Michelle Lafon, Major, Massachusetts Air National Guard. Okay. Charles Andrew Carroll III, United States Navy. Charlie graduated from Newport High in 1951. He went into the Navy during the Korean conflict, serving from 1951 until 1954. His life interests took him from flying planes to broadcast engineering with Channel 38 for the Red Sox, Bruins, and Celtics teams. He was a maker of fine lines, a photography enthusiast, and an avid rifleman. He served as a director for the Council of Aging and was a member of the News and Views discussion group. In retirement, he was an actor for the Ames Room Playhouse. So when I do this, I'll read the name and then I'll read which branch of service he served, and, uh, he or she served, and then we'll ring a bell, and then we can do our applause after I read them about them, okay? Uh, Robert Cecil, United States Coast Guard Reserves. Bob was born in Newburyport and traced his lineage back to the early settlers of Newbury, calling himself a Java Idol. While in Coast Guard Reserves, he served an apprenticeship at Portsmouth Naval Shipyard and remained employed there until his retirement. He, made, he created custom-made fishing equipment, built his own boat, and even built an actual firing cannon. He loved darts, good conversation on a variety of topics, and led a simple and respected life as a gracious host. Albert W. Avery Jr., United States Navy. Al proudly served in the Navy during the Korean War. He is fondly remembered for his quick wit and his love of one-liners. He enjoyed boating, fishing, camping, and late in his life became an avid builder of model railroad. He was passionate about his lifelong profession as a machinist, from which he retired in 1993. Cross, the Purple Heart, and the Army Commendation Medal as a helicopter pilot. 
He was an expert skier, loved golf, and loved being in and out of the water. He was an accomplished chef, but most of all, loved spending time with his beautiful girls, his daughter and three granddaughters. <laughs> David Brunel, United States Navy. <laughs> David was a longtime Newport resident and Vietnam era veteran of the United States Navy, serving from 1973 to 1975. He was an interior and exterior house painter who struggled his whole life with Huntington's disease, eventually succumbing. <laughs> Glenn Maurice Bell Jr., United States Air Force. <laughs> Glenn graduated from Newport High School in the class of 1963 and then served for the Air Force for 12 years. After graduating summa cum laude from Mount St. Mary's College, Glenn embarked on a 36-year career with the National Security Agency. Following his tour with the NSA, he became a partner in Adventure Yachts, selling powerboats and sailboats, sailboats to nautical buyers. He loved the beach and was a master grill chef, and truly loved spending time with his dog, Chico. <laughs> Charles Michael Bamford, United States Navy. Charles Mike Bamford joined the Navy toward the end of the Korean War and served for three years. After gaining a degree in education, he enjoyed a lifelong career as a teacher at Winthrop Elementary in Ipswich. Mike was the 1960 Yankee Homecoming General Chairman, past president of the Newport Lions Club, exalted ruler of the Benevolent Protective Order of the Alps here in Newport, and he will be missed by all those who felt his generous and giving spirit. A graduate of Newport High School, Norm joined the Air Force during the Korean War and served in Alaska. While he made his career as an electrical engineer, he also enjoyed working on Salisbury Beach, fixing the rides. He hiked the White Mountains well into his 70s and traveled and camped with his family across the country. An avid woodworker, he created many beautiful pieces for friends and family. Norman was quiet and a gentle man who took care of his family in many ways. <laughs> Gardner Latimer, United States Army. Gardner was a 1960 Newport High School graduate. He joined the Army and served in tour in New Mexico before joining the American Legion and supporting the charitable works of the Newport Odd Fellows. Gardner was the co-owner of L&N Shellfish and was also a reserve police officer in Salisbury and an Essex County Deputy Sheriff. A highlight of each year was a trip to the Northeast Kingdom with his twin brother Gary for fishing and later in the season hunting with Gary and Maine. He was proud to be the great grandfather to Selena Devine. Tage Gordon Lindra. From 1961 to 1964, Tage was stationed in Okinawa, Japan with the Army. After that, he began an illustrious, oh, sorry. After that, he began an illustrious 32 career, 32 year career with the United Parcel Service, where he was affectionately known as Lucky by his co-workers and friends. He and his wife traveled extensively through the US in an RV, and also traveled to Japan several times once experiencing the thrill of a bullet train ride. He could build exquisite Japanese cabinetry, which was displayed throughout his house. His affable personality ensured that he made friends easily wherever he went. <laughs> David A. Lamro, United States Navy. <laughs> Dave joined the Navy in 1959 and served until 1964. He worked for 37 years in the newspaper business before taking an early retirement and working in the health and fitness industry. He was a competitive roller, an outrigger, racer, with a national reputation, competing over 700 races. Possessing a strong love of music, Dave frequented many of the live outdoor concerts during Yankee Homecoming each year. He cherished time on Plum Island at his daughter's home. Douglas Marshall, United States Army. Allen was born in Newport, the 11th of 12.
12 children. He graduated from Newport High School in 1948 and joined the Army during the Vietnam War. He enjoyed bird watching, a good car game, and creating wood projects. A man well-liked and admired, he leaves behind seven grandchildren and five great-grandchildren. Richard A. Noseworthy, United States Air Force. Richard served with the Air Force from 1958 until his honorable discharge in 1958 as an airman first class. He was a collector of die cast military models and a history buff. He never met an animal he didn't like, and the smallest insect was transported outside the house to enjoy another life. He was a dancer at heart and earned a dance trophy at a father daughter dance. Later in life, his grandchildren, Jasmine and Kaylin, became his new favorite hobby, spending countless hours watching them mature as young adults. <laughs> Donald Raymond Smith, United States Navy. <laughs> Don joined the Navy the same year as he graduated high school and served as a machinist mate during the Korean War. He joined Western Electric in Andover in 1952 and retired there 33 years later. He was an active member of the Greek Orthodox Church and the Newport Masons. At the Greek festivals, he was always lending a helping hand, but especially loved tending the grill. He picked up golf in retirement and was a natural here and in Florida. His other passion was fishing, either through the ice or on the Merrimack for striped bass. Richard Sr., United States Army. <laughs> Gerald graduated from Newport High School in 1948 and went into the Army for three years during the Korean War. He eventually got his degree in construction management and went on to build custom homes along the seacoast. In the later part of his construction career, Gerald was employed by weather vane restaurants and he built new restaurants throughout New England. and graduated from Newport High School. Right after school, he joined the National Guard and proudly served for 10 years, attending all drills and performing two weeks of active duty training each year. He was a truck driver his entire life and finished his career as a driver for W.B. Mason. <laughs> Kenneth G. Weber, United States Navy. After graduating from Newport High School, Ken went to work with the Boston and Maine Railroad. He joined the Navy at the start of the Korean War in 1950 and served for four years. He returned to the railroad industry briefly and then turned his sights to education, where he eventually earned a doctorate. After retiring as a teacher, Ken taught mathematics to inmates at the Middleton Jail, an endeavor that brought him great satisfaction. United States Marine Corps. Tom was born in Newport and attended Essex Aggie High School. After graduation, he joined the Marine Corps and proudly served for five years until his honorable discharge as advanced corporal. For many years, he worked as a heavy equipment operator, but his true calling was that of a farmer, plowing or mowing the fields, planting crops, repairing tractors, and caring for animals.
He had a long career in the insurance industry and retired at the age of 80 from the IRS. He was a director of the Historical Society of Old Windsor and a collector of antique fire memorabilia, besides being a member of the Elks and the Sons of the American Revolution, as well as the Fire Mark Circle of America. Hans Erwich arrived in Newport in the 1980s. His engaging smile and inner wisdom quickly placed him in the position of chairman of the Harvard Commission, a position he held for eight years. In the 1950s, before coming to this country, Hans was a top gun for the Dutch Air Force, where he was a jet fighter pilot flying the British meteor jet and member of the Dalton Club. His genuine interest in others and his hearty laugh will be missed by all of his My apologies if you missed anyone else out there, but thank you. Okay, I have a couple more uh, things to do right now. First, I want to recognize uh, our representative, Jim Kelkhorst, who just came up. Okay, I don't... the person that I'm reading it for is not here, but I do believe some of his family members are here. Whereas we are gathered here today to recognize Memorial Day, we are also here to celebrate and pay tribute to George A. Rowe, a lifelong resident of Newport, who has lived here for 96 years. Whereas George A. Rowe was on the USS Fieldland DE-640, a destroyer escort in April 1944 for the Battle of Okinawa, one of the longest engagements in World War II. Whereas, the ship survived suicide bomber attacks and attempted boardings by enemy soldiers and would land at Hiroshima three weeks after the atomic blast. Whereas George A. Roque was standing near a three-inch gun when it opened fire on a submarine during the Battle of Okinawa and lost some of his ability to hear. Whereas George A. Roof served his country as a nuclear inspector at the Portsmouth Naval Shipyard in Kittery, Maine until his retirement. Whereas George A. Roof is, is the acting commander of the local American Legion chapter. Whereas George A. Roof has devoted most of his adult life successfully advocating for his fellow Newport residents and his fellow Newport veterans to make sure they can afford to live in the city of Newport. Now, therefore, I, Sean Reardon, Mayor of the City of Newport, do hereby uh, proclaim that on the Memorial Day, May 30th, 2022, special recognition be given to the local hero, George A. Roe, who throughout his life has always placed the need of his country and other fellow citizens above his own needs. Thank you. I think if, if, if uh, some of the Rope family is here, could they just come up real quick so I can pre present them with a proclamation? And I think Larry Sosak has a framed uh, picture for them as well. citation to give. Uh, many of you know Kevin Hunt uh, here in your report. He has been an integral part of servicing our veterans, not only here in Newport and the surrounding communities. Uh, he's our Director of Veteran Services. He is Commander of the Disabled American Veterans Post locally. He is the Executive Director of the Veterans Legacy Initiative, which is a nonprofit which holds a monthly luncheon for veterans age 89 and above that they have over at uh, Hungry Traveler, I believe. Uh, he's also a board member of the Friends of the Newport Council of Aging. He told me this morning that this is his 28th Memorial Day ceremony. So I am presenting the City of Newport commendation presented to the Director of Veteran Services, Kevin Hunt, an appreciation for your years of outstanding service to the Newport veteran community and their dependents, and for planning this beautiful Memorial Day ceremony for the past 15 years. 
Your dedica dedication and commitment to the city and to so many of Greater Newport's veterans go above and beyond the call of duty. It is my honor as mayor of the city of Newport to extend my gratitude for all you have done to make our community better. Thank you, Kevin. I didn't know that was coming. Thank you. That's very nice. I see up here we're joined by uh, Representative Jim Kelkhorse. And uh, Jim, would you like to say a few words? Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Thank you all. It's a beautiful Memorial Day today. And I remember four years ago I was coming out of the Newburyport Post Office when I received the call from a family member to inform me that. Uh, one of our family members had uh, died uh, in a helicopter crash, an Apache helicopter crash, serving in the United States Army. So I know how very important and what this day means to people, especially those who have lost loved ones in service of our country, because I know just how I felt when I was walking down the steps and the emotion that overcame me, knowing that I would never see him again, only 28 years old. So. Uh, I ask all of you today to think about what this day means, what Derek Hines, what George and Shea, what uh, my family member, what they did, why they enlisted in the Army, why they enlisted in the Marines and other branches of the military, what it was that they were serving to protect, and it was to protect the liberty, the freedom we all enjoy uh, as Americans each and every day, to protect the Bill of Rights. Uh, and, and to ensure that our kids grow up in a country where we respect one another. We may all have differing views, but at the end of the day, we want to get to the same goal, and that is to pass on to the next generation this wonderful country that we all enjoy so very much, that these young scouts out here, uh, the next leaders of this great city, of this great state, this wonderful country, uh, are here participating in to know that they're going to be the ones who are making good laws, who are appropriating funds so we can have wonderful, safe schools. They're the ones who are going, going to be leaving the generation after them, ensuring that this country uh, remains the freest uh, and most wonderful country in the whole wide world. Thank you all very much, and thank you to our veterans uh, for all that you do to serve and protect us and ensure that uh, people like myself and our elect other elected officials up here today can serve you in this great free country. Thank you. Thank you. A few additional thank yous are always in order. Is Jack Bradshaw, did, did he make it today? Hello, Jack. Now, Jack, we owe you thank you for two reasons. We owe you thank you for your service in the military. We also owe you a thank you for your service to this city 60 years ago when you and a group of others banded together and prevented all these beautiful brick buildings that we look at here. You and others prevented them from being plowed down and turned into a mall. Thank you, Jack Bradshaw. I'd like to thank uh, the Newburyport Department of Public Services, Tony Fanari and his boys, John Ewitt, Mike Bartlett. These guys are working today? No, they're taking the day off here. And they're working to make this place beautiful from 5 o'clock this morning. Thank you, guys. Thank you to the seventh graders at the Knock Middle School who joined me this Thursday. And we put out about 1,500 flags on veteran graves at St. Mary's and Belleville Cemetery. And that's the seventh grade from the Knock Middle School. Thank you, guys. <laughs> the mayor mentioned the color guards. We have the Coast Guard color guard. We have the Newburyport Police color guard. We also have the firefighters from the Newburyport Fire Department joining us. I can't say enough for all of those groups. Fire Department, police department, military active duty. These are people that are willing to sacrifice their lives to make sure our lives are okay. When we sleep at night, they're awake. 
and you sleep soundly because of them. I'd like a round of applause for all of them. I don't know where uh, our, our lone motorcycle went, Dick, Dick Pelletier. We normally have a few motorcycles uh, out here, but uh, Dick, thank you. Patriots for American Veteran Organization. Today the flag flies at half-mast, the flag's at half-staff because of all of the men and women who are no longer with us, the veterans that are no longer with us. On Veterans Day in November, we celebrate the living veterans. On the flagpole behind you is, it's called the Gaten Moral Flagpole, and it has a smaller, besides the American flag, it has a smaller black flag below the American flag. That flag is a POW MIA flag that represents approximately 86,000 men and women who are still missing in action from all the wars that we have fought. That flag was designed and distributed back in the 80s by two local residents. Uh, I don't believe we're here today, um, but it's a beautiful flag. Below that flag is a special flag that has two gold stars on it. That's a gold star flag representing the city of Newburyport and its extended family because each of those stars represents a veteran who lost their lives in a recent war. And that's First Lieutenant Derek Hines and Sergeant Jordan Shea. On that flag, those two gold stars have five points, and one of the points aims upward to heaven, representing where those two are looking down at us today. Just in front of the flagpole, in an area where many of you are standing, if you look down, you'll see that there are bricks on the ground and they have inscriptions on them. We started this about four years ago. If you have a member of your family or a good friend who is a veteran, they can be alive, they do not have to be deceased. You can purchase a brick and have their name inscribed on the brick and installed here in the Veteran Plaza for us from City Hall. The cost for the bricks is $100 and there is a profit. The profit is used to restore military memorials here in the city of Newburyport. There are over 30 memorials in the city. These bronze tablets that you see beside me, those were refurbished about three years ago with that money. We've also got five new flagpoles. None of that cost the taxpayers a dime. I'd now like to ban, if they would, this is hot, I don't think we need to know into more of the history of the uh, Memorial Day. If we could have the ban, Play the Armed Forces Medley. If you're a veteran and your particular branch of service comes up, please stand by. Hey, hey, hey. On a roll off.
that will conclude what we're going to do here at City Hall. We're going to move down to the waterfront, down to the river next to the Tuscan Grill. There'll be a brief ceremony down there honoring those in the Navy and in the Coast Guard who have given their lives at sea. A Coast Guard cutter will hove two in the river, a wreath will go in the water at the last note of the Coast Guard hymn, Semper Paratus. After that, we're going to go up State Street, right back through CVS, down to Pond Street and the Veterans Cemetery, where there will be a concluding ceremony. Anyone who wants to walk along in a parade, please join us. Uh, you're all welcome to. It's fun being in a parade because everyone thinks you're a celebrity when you're waving out to the people. <laughs> So thank you for joining us here. Please come along and join us for the rest. Thank you. Uh, as you probably all know by now, Newburyport is the birthplace of the United States Coast Guard, a very enriching honor. Besides keeping our local waters safe, the Coast Guard takes a role in keeping all our country's waters safe from the Great Lakes right through the oceans, the Gulfs, and actually into the Middle East. And now I'm going to ask the band to play the Coast Guard hymn, Semper Paratus. At the end of that, a wreath will go in the water, and that wreath signifies the men and women of the Army, Thank you, I'm sorry, what? the Navy, Coast Guard, and Mer Merchant Marine. On a roll on. Larry did an awful lot personally to this cemetery. 
really should get a round of applause. The first veteran who was buried in this cemetery is a veteran by the name of Joe Rochette. He was the first Yankee homecoming town crier, and he was a man who said, no one's going to remember me. Well, no, Joe. Hello, Joe Rochette. <laughs> we all remember you. And now I'd ask Mayor Reardon to come over, and we're going to place a wreath at the base of the memorial, recently redesigned. Captain Burkholt, if you could come down and join me. Captain John Eric Burkholt from the local Salvation Army will do the benediction. I'm surprised that this man is still walking. I'm going to tell you a secret. He has on not only a dark uniform, but a sweater. <laughs> God is with us all the time, in the morning with joy bells chime. In the evening when lights are low, God is with us everywhere we go. In the memory of those who gave the last full message today, God bless everyone here, and God bless America. Thank you, Captain. The band is now going to play Amazing Grace. That will be followed by taps, and then we will raise the flag. That's a good band. Thank you. That's the first time I think that we've had four trumpet players playing tap. Those guys are good. Thank you, guys. Could I have a couple of scouts join me down here at the flagpole? 
On Memorial Day, the flag does not stay at half-mast all day. It gets raised up to the to uh, full mast, full staff, at noontime. So we're going to do that right now. started it only came to my attention a couple of years ago it's called taps across america there's always been a time at three o'clock in the afternoon where we're asked to remember the men and women in armed forces as a, as respect on memorial day about two years ago that went public on a radio station and buglers all across the country at three o'clock today will be pay, playing taps you can look this up tapsacrossamerica.org and if you can play the bugle step out in your front porch at 3 o'clock and give it thank you very much have a great day <laughs> 